And if people look at when the domain name for a A E nine eleven was created, I don't know the exact date, but the It was the end of October two thousand six, which was after I put up my quote Star Wars Beam Weapons article. You know, after right. Borg and I put up that other thing. But their the first time their website was archived was three and a half weeks after I submitted my request for corrections to NIST. And it was about that's when yeah. they submitted their um their their thermite free RFC. Yes. Yes, so that was that was so you you can see that this is more damage uh, control anyone? pots and pans you know, which would happen to, just so happened to be around the same time as the those filings were made and all the other research was being posted. Actually, so the day that I submitted my RFC to NIST, request for correction to NIST, in mid-March, uh, Andrew prepared a press uh, a press release. It went out there and it started, you know, zipping around. And that was, same day, Stephen Jones came up, oh, I just got these, these this whistleblower uh, blueprints for the building. Now we can do something. Look, I get, you know, it just make all this noise out of it, banging pots and pans. Mm-hmm. It's just floor plans. Yeah. It, 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 so, yeah. The, uh, have you got the letter for the um, architects and engineers? Oh, that was the. Uh, oh, that that thing that you're talking about. Um, the, um, the, the the rules for, for for joining. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, that, yeah, yeah. yeah the, you mean the vetting procedures? The vetting procedure. If you want to become a member of Architects and Engineers for Truth, yeah, there's a vetting yeah, procedure. Yeah, I, I can probably dig that out. I've got that somewhere. Well, I, I said it. I gave it to him uh, yesterday. You yeah, gave yeah. me it to do. Yeah, I thought you just could send me the link. I could just read off the, the I, I requirements. Don't, I, I don't know where it is online, but um, well, I, I can probably find it. But basically, yeah. I mean, just to summarise, it, we'll, we'll post the link in the chat window. But if you look at the, the Architects and Engineers for Nine Eleven Truth vetting procedures, that was leaked by somebody who. Um, who realised that um, you know the architects and engineers group wasn't really going any- anywhere, and so they wrote this book called Nano Management: The Destruction of a Truth Group or something. I can't remember the exact title. I'll probably get this in a minute. Um, let's just see if this was uh, Nano Management: The Disintegration of a Non-Profit Corporation. And I've got. I've got. It, I've, got I've got it. Yeah, I've got it here. Some my through a mic three. For there the it is. Through a mic three blog. But I'll I'll put it in the I, chat. I have window. it. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah, I yeah. just gave it to you guys. Yeah. Okay. I've, I've, I've got a link it. to it though. It's not a file. Oh, it's a link. So okay. If you, if you, that 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 came from this book, which was called um, yeah, Nano Management. Management, and it was oh, it was, was was available as a free PDF. I'll get the exact title again. It was. Um, <laughs> Anatomy, yes, uh, sorry, nano management: the disintegration of a non-profit uh, corporation (SC) by Michael Arm- Armenia. And within that book was this page. Let's see if it's still on Lulu. People. It's can, uh, uh, two seven, page two seventy three or something like that. That's yeah, pretty far down there. Yeah, I've I've pasted the link in the chat window. On the, okay. on the, uh, uh, yeah, if you want to read from eight, if you want to read the thing, you just read this page. This page, just read it out because this page is absolute dynamite. Yeah, yeah, so um, I'll, ju- I'll just I'll just get that, that back up again. And, and so w- when people sign up for eighty nine eleven truth, they uh, you know they get put on a team that to, to keep them busy to do something. And That's and right. so and so uh, one of the teams are the vetting team to see if somebody's uh, qualified to to join their their club. And and this is tells you know you reject you, they they apparently do background checks on people and check to see do lots of web searches with the right. applicant's name it's, with and, ev- and anything else. This is Appendix C from the a, a architects and engineers uh, vetting procedures, and it says the primary source for information is the internet. Brackets if necessary, contacted personal references may be considered. Therefore, it is assumed that the vetter is competent in using the internet for research, particularly with regard to using search engines and their respective advanced search criteria. A, I won't read all of that because it goes on a bit. Um, and then it says, use a general search, cross-reference search results to confirm identity, attempt to find at least one photograph. Google a uh, complete email address, username at domain.xyz, Google the username, Google phone number. 9-11 related to site search. search search the JREF forum search 9-11 blogger search 9-11 meetup it says uh, refined searches using google.com if not already found for item A to the above 
reciting fine Google searches to determine any correlation to questionable ideologies using combinations of username and a search term as well as full name and a, new, and a search term among the search terms to be considered are brackets no planes sorry a quotation marks no planes DEW as in DEW nukes HARP UFO Judy Wood Jews Holocaust and Zionism so the only if you look at this page the only person named the only person named in the whole of human history is uh, funnily enough Judy Wood so isn't that strange so anyone that found Judy Wood connected with any websites that, or whatever that this person that they were vetting was associated with should be considered for non-admission non and, and, we, and we've documented uh, four cases of those, three or four cases where the AE911 members who had signed their petition and set up a profile had put some information or links about Judy Wood's research. Like Building 4 uh, is another one. Yeah. Right. And they either had uh, their uh, pay, their profile deleted completely or they had the, their profile edited to take out links or references to Dr. Judy Wood. So we have proof that that organisation was actively filtering out information about what you've been t hearing over the last few hours. And, uh, and, uh, and yet, also they, yet they claim to be a 9-11 truth organisation. I mean, we, we could do a whole programme about A 9-11. I mean, that, that much is clear. They're not good. They are up to no good. Their entire mission statement is to su suppress the truth. That is, they're Correct. not after the truth. They've got too much Correct. money, too much influence, too much power. If they'd have got behind um, Dr. Judy Wood's court case, um, which wasn't about anything other than saying the government has lied, let's have well, a new investigation. No, no, that, no, no, no. Not just the government lied. It was, it was about the, the contractors on the news report because that's we had a Sorry. legal avenue because they defrauded. The, the the American taxpayers they were paid yeah, for by taxpayer money and if they'd have they got behind you they would have got what right, they wanted right, let, me, let, let me emphasize this more so I was showing where they had committed fraud it was a case about fraud and you know who these people were many members of the military industrial complex and none of them with their bank of lawyers could find anything wrong with the information I submitted that's why they had to ignore the law to dismiss the case yeah, and put up a mass propaganda against anything you were doing. So now, if you had if if you had a hundred thousand people on the street, yeah, yeah, if, right. you had a, if the street outside that court, they gave us an eight minute you know hearing, uh, and if you had the street filled with um, you know truthers demanding this case go forward, they would have had a hard hard time to sweep it on the carpet. But as it was, can you sort of blame them? Because I guarantee you, I think it, no, I don't guarantee you, but. I think it's a good chance 99.999% if that case was sent forward those lawyers would probably be justified on the way home from work I and then yeah, it doesn't go anywhere the, the other thing that gets covered up in all of this while we're getting onto these issues a little bit is that it's the government this the government that the government lied or the government mm -hmm. you know set up this story or whatever it, Who's the whatever government? they say but what was involved in the in the court case and this is extremely important that people realize this was action against private contractors uh, that the government had employed so it may well be we could argue that the government was was you know it's not quite true we know that but the government was being uh, in fact, it, 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 from you could even go as far as saying that they were they knew that the contractors weren't being totally honest. But, but that's what they wanted. They, yeah, oh yeah, that, that's yeah. what I brought up to NIST, and NIST said, "Oh, but it was specifically in the contract of ARA that they were not to tell us what happened." Yeah, yeah. So we we got even more information from that. So you know there is there is some evidence that they were obviously uh, working to the same goals, but. We got well. You could also read it that certain people in the government weren't very happy about what was being done, and they were actually trying to, in a very sort of uh, cryptic way, tell 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 us that they knew, you know, these these contractors had to be, they had the most power basically, and they were allowed to lie and to, and they you know, carry out their agenda, 
which was to keep the technology which is what this is all about covered up uh, and, th- and that, that technology hasn't been developed by the government itself it may have been developed by a consortium of contractors uh, in black, black budget programs but the, you know we don't we don't n- we don't know the details of th- we don't know all the serial numbers of the technology and all that sort of stuff I've, I've got a, I've got a beautiful example, a parallel. See, it, you know, if, uh, we had enough people who cared about this case, it could have gone forward. Mm-hmm. It had a lot, a lot better chance to go forward than if only five people know about it. Five people know about it, uh, they, why would the judges stick their necks out? Uh, but there's another ca- similar whistleblower case, well, parallel, but similar, wh- parallel case where the same whistleblower case, uh, law was used. And that'll blow you away. Uh, Lance Armstrong, who was doping in winning seven Tour de France's. And then he retired, and the next year Floyd Landis won, and he got caught for doping. I think maybe Lance Armstrong, uh, you know, saw they're developing a test to be able to test this stuff, but they knew he would, he'd been had, having positive tests along the way, but uh, made, you know, donations to make the test go away, or, you know. In other words, a lot of people knew that Lance Armstrong was was doping, but they but they helped cover it up the whole way through. Uh, David Walsh from uh, uh, London, I forgot what newspaper he was with, was was on his trail from the get go, and Lance Armstrong sued the newspaper, and and they they settled out of court and they had to pay it off. But the newspaper was correct; they could stand behind it. Now Greg Lamond who won the Tour de France three times, he had a bike company, Le Mans Bikes. Uh, and he said uh, about Lance Armstrong, you know, winning like he did, he said, well, it's either the best, co- the, the, the biggest comeback in the history of all sports or the guy's cheating. That's a true statement. It's one or the other. He wasn't accusing him of cheating. He was saying it's the greatest comeback in the history of all sports or he's cheating. And because I hear a keyboard... <laughs> Uh, can somebody mute their keyboard? Hello? Oh, Andrew, Andrew, could you mute your mute keyboard? Um, anyway, uh, so in the history of all sports, you know, or, or, or is cheating? Well, based on that one statement, uh, Greg LeMond's bike company was destroyed by, by Lance Armstrong. He had that kind of power. But then finally it became fashionable to file this, this case. And, um, that that uh, you know that that it was able to come out only you know what thirteen years and that it was fashionable and you know what La- Floyd Landis filed a federal key tam case just like mine because Lance Armstrong was paid by the U S postal system he was a contractor for the government he was a private contractor he was paid he's and new. he committed fraud this is, he's new it's only his second show. Hello? What? Hello? And, and, uh, so, so, uh, you know, Lance Armstrong committed fraud, and it was the same law that was used, and that, that moved forward because it was fashionable. So, so, but, my point is that, um, if we, we had a chance, the, the 911 Truth Movement had a chance to get what they are asking for. And because of their lack of publicity and the lack of the cover-up... Be- because they the, get conned. Because they got conned by the charlatans that claim to be out for truth. Your A&E groups and your... The groups that are just distractions away from what you, we, we should be looking at. Um, they were they were talked into trashing my work and not looking at it so they didn't, they wouldn't see the that's evidence. Right. They're taught into just believing the story and standing behind their... You know, waving their flag for their football team instead of thinking... And yeah, if they had gotten behind this, it would have moved forward. Now I, I want to bring out one more thing. Take this opportunity to put this out publicly, because the people who've been around this for so long will now go aha, and light, well, light bulbs will kick on. Uh, so I couldn't talk about this case as long as it was a live case. But as soon as it was, it was denied, not dismissed, but it was denied, the Supreme Court doesn't have to hear a case unless they feel like it. Well, they didn't feel like it, and so they denied the case. That ended the case. You know what happened right after that? Richard Gage, Stephen Jones, David Griffin, and so forth, organized this uh, nationwide press conference. Every city people were supposed to rent a room at a hotel in case the press had any questions. 
Now, now that I was free to talk about it, no way I could get any word out. They had a lockdown. In addition, remember ABC never released pictures before. They those popped out then, so I didn't have the shock and awe of those are the, those are the pictures in my case. 